Episode of Freediving Tribe. Uh, today we are here with uh, Pascal Berger uh, from uh, Geneva in Switzerland. Um, Pascal is an athlete. Um, Pascal is a co founder of uh, Taha Freedivers and also uh, one of oh, the owner of Octopus uh, Freediving. Nice. Welcome. Nice to meet you in nice my you. Uh, stock. Yeah, we are here in uh, Pascal's. Uh, yeah, what is it? Uh, basement, lavatory, uh, stock, whatever you want to call it. So this is the place where uh, he invents and packs all your goods and uh, yeah, uh, ships it to you. Exactly. Yeah, this is my main. You don't see it properly on the camera, but I have all the shelves and this is where I prepare your postage. So I spend like kind of a lot of time here. Nice meeting you finally. Yep. Uh, last time we saw each other just uh, shortly on the competition eight years ago in Switzerland, the pool competition. Um, you've been an athlete, you got some national records, I believe you still have two. It's the variable weight and the no fins, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Variable weight is 131 meter and no fins is 67? 67, yeah. 67, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, are you competing still? No, after after my last variable weight record uh, four years ago, I I trained so hard the previous year I started to get a little bit like a bored of heavy training. So I switched now and I just do some fun training, shallow. I don't go so deep. I lost <laughs> kind of a lot of breath hold, and I go back a little bit to old patient. I do like some surfing, windsurfing, and I started like spear fishing last year so i think i guess spearfishing is going to be my next way to breast to 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 to, to breast hold yeah okay we come later to the octopus point but do you think uh, you're going to invent also some octopus stuff for spearfishing nah, no because i think <laughs> i kind of did a lot of free diving during like at least 5 years of heavy training and then you have time to think about product and what is missing and everything uh, and free diving is like kind of new, so there is a lot of a lot to invent. Like spear fishing is already like 50 years or more, even like 100 years old. The guns and everything. So I mean, you will really need to. I will need to practice intensively for 10 years just to start to get maybe new innovative ideas. So, no. Okay. Um, tell us something about you, Pascal. Um, uh, how and. When did you start free diving? Um, how did you end up being uh, doing a, a variable weight uh, record? And um, like, how is your? Um, how did you jump into the sport and uh, being part of the free divers, ending up with octopus? Tell us a little bit about the, about your history, about your way, how to grow into the sport. Uh, okay, let's try to make it like not too long. Uh, I was uh, at some moment smoking quite a lot, a pack a day of cigarette, and then I was thinking, oh, I need to find a way to stop. There was a free diving sc uh, school uh, club in Geneva. And I said, okay, I'm gonna try to quit smoking, and at the same time start doing this free diving training. So I started like this. And then the first years I was just going there once a week, a little bit, like, really, like, oh, easy. And then uh, after a year, I started to train more. And then there was a place, there were not so many Swiss uh, freediver going to world championship or the place left. They asked me if I wanted to go. And uh, at the same time, the previous year, we had this direct flight like Geneva, Sharm el Sheikh with EasyJet. Well, sometimes it was super cheap to fly there, so I started training depths. So I went in Nice, I think it was 2000, I don't know, 2012 or something like this for the World Championship. And it started like this actually, yeah. Mainly because of this uh, 
I had this opportunity to 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 go often in 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 Sham. My 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 ex boss was allowing me to work full time two weeks and take two weeks off. So I was cool. just going like this, yeah. Okay. And then in um, and then in I met uh, Miguel Lozano in uh, an instructor course at the academy. We became quite fast good friends. And then I became friend with uh, Steve Keenan, and at some point we said, "Okay, why don't we like open a, a center in in Dahab?" The main point was Steve would run it most of the time because he was uh, he was speaking based, Arabic yeah, also. speaking Arabic, based there for a long period. Miguel will come for teaching some some spe spe special courses, and me being a little bit around. Teaching a bit, I was thinking, and then uh, I, uh, doing the design, graphic, contability, other other of my things. Finally, like actually, Steve was uh, was more teaching, and I was more like uh, um, uh, fixing stuff around and like things like this at the end. And I was not, I was maybe in in the hub, yeah, five six months a year, on average, and the other. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what else? Yeah, and at the same time, uh, a colleague of me in, in an art school where I used to work told me he, he did a project on a crowdfunding. And he explained me how it works and the concept looked quite interesting. So I kind of looked a little bit and then I said, okay, why not to try to make a nose clip? And, uh, but it has to be a little bit different. So I had this idea of putting a pad. So just to jump on the nose clip, so back in the days there was mainly the Paradisia? Uh... No, was well, Abna Academy was the main main yeah. main seller, I think, and uh, maybe a few other ones, yeah, like uh, Trigons, yeah. well, a few other, but not many, I guess four, five, six different ones. I think the first one I had was the bulky Paradisia or a Paradisia. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Guillaume Neri is still diving with, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, so I, it started like this, and uh, I didn't expect it. It would work so well. Like uh, I was super lucky. I started at the good, uh, good moment when like freediving was just, I guess, starting to pump out. Like freediving school were opening a little bit everywhere. So yeah, so it started like yeah with this uh, nose clip, and uh, it's I had no economy, nothing left for my years of free diving. So actually, without this crowdfunding, it would it wouldn't have been possible because uh, I moved for uh, just a nose clip is 100 kilo. It's it goes in a big machine. Uh, it's injected with 20 tons of pressure, like uh, the, and cost uh, the price of a small car new. Just a mould to make a nose clip, so so um, so yeah. So I was very lucky that this crowdfunding was like uh, av av like av av uh, yeah available, and then yeah, step by step, I did another one and another project, and uh, people were following, and uh, and now for two years I just do this. Like uh, so, before I had other uh, still other work. Uh, in uh, in the design field, and uh, now uh, yeah, I only do octopus. So okay. yeah, only that. Yeah, only okay. that. Okay, so it started all with the uh, nose clip. Okay. Yeah, um, give us a roughly idea how many nose clips uh, you produced. <laughs> You have an idea? Uh, you don't have to tell me. No, no, you no, no, no. It's uh, you know, it should you. be. If I don't know around around fifteen twenty thousand I wow. guess in uh, yeah something fifteen maybe I would say I don't have a proper account uh, yeah something like this yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I was looking at vertical blue uh, these days and like yeah half of the athlete they have at least one of octopus product which is super cool yeah. I will never have dreamed of, of this even on top because it's like I did everything from the beginning. I do the graphic design, the social media. Of course, sometimes I have a little bit of help for some specific topics, some pictures or, or some mountings. Or, but uh, yeah, so it's true to be, it's a micro company still, but to be at the same level as uh, other big company for accessories at least, like Mares or other one, it's just like, wow, it's, yeah, it's yeah, really cool. They are not wearing Mares, they are wearing octopus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So. Cool. 
What is um, what was next? Next was the lanyard, I think. I think I'm go I'm getting lost now, but I think it was yeah it was a nose clip lanyard then. So the yeah. lanyard. Um, how you came up producing a lanyard? I mean, they've been out some lanyards already. So what made you think like okay, um, ah, lanyards is a good idea. Uh, that's gonna work. Actually, lanyard was not a so good idea because it's very complex and expensive to produce. I have like around um, 10 different producers doing compartments, so yeah. But uh, for the lanyard, yeah, I, there were a few lanyards available and uh, it was still kind of garage made. I did some in the beginning. Before it, I already, it was already called Octopus Lanyard, but it was, was not really a company, it was more garage stuff. And I was using the usual carabiner, drilling a hole and putting the thing and blah, blah, blah. And I think, okay, I can do a little bit better than this. Okay. And um, it was hard to find a, a proper carabiner, like, which fitted what I wanted to do. So I said, okay, let's do my own carabiner. I went to companies in Italy who were doing like... Um, Climbing, or? climbing like a carabiner, but the forge is f cold or hot forging was kind of complex and super expensive moldings. And then I looked a little bit around and then finally talking with the producer who is making my uh, nose clip, he said, oh, but we have high tech, really high tech plastic used for aerospace or like really like, uh... so we made some tests and find one with a carbon inside, like really strong. And so finally I said, okay, I'm gonna do a light lanyard and uh, it will not fit everybody some people like heavy lanyards some yeah. other were light yeah. but finally yeah it works now yeah so okay uh will there be a heavy version coming or i'm thinking if i have time yeah i'm thinking but uh, it's still like uh, the process I like to... the heavy ones. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah the process i have to check i have to but i was thinking yeah maybe next year but i want to do again like something specific a specific carabiner and uh, I have two direction of work, so I need to explore it, but it takes some time. Okay. Yeah. In the beginning, there have been, I think, five colors. Now you're reduced to uh, three. Yeah, because I have, I start to have more and more products, and it's hard to get too many color references, yeah. so I try to leave a bit. Yeah. yeah. All right. Then with the lanyards, then. Uh, they they also kicked off like like hell. Everybody was buying the lanyard, so it was um, yeah, it was a good choice producing them. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. It was no, it was still a good <laughs> thing. End, yeah, yeah. I mean, the even end. if you uh, personally thought maybe mm, it's a risk, uh, I don't know. But, yeah, yeah, um, no, no. It, it, it's cool, but uh, yeah, if I had one product, I think it's still one of the yeah, most yeah. used lanyards. No, no, exactly. Out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's true, like. Now, like, oh, we can actually, yeah, we had different, it uh, got some improvement, but, uh, yeah, now we changed this part here now, which is in poly white polycarbonate, so it will avoid, like, the wire aging in this area. Degree. Yeah, because it's, um, here in camera, you cannot see it, but you cannot, it rounded the, the thing. It's not possible to, to bend anymore fully, yeah, okay. So, yeah, that's a, a change we did lately. And yeah, it's true. Now, in terms of design, I, I, I'm kind of happy with the product. It's true. If you compare it to a regular carabiner, it's more hydrodynamic. Yeah. And uh, yeah, all the, for example, this I produced to my specification, the strap, like yeah. on polyester. I wanted something like in the car belt, you know, yeah. like something really strong. And like, uh, this, okay, I, I thought, okay, we need uh, pulling a little bit like, you can find with gloves or... You told me you did a bit of surfing. This reminds me of some of the straps you have on a but, yeah, 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 exactly. So I tried to add a few, few new new things. And uh, yeah, and uh, the cable, I, I think for me, it's... I, I, I did a lot of tests and this cable, I like it because it has elasticity, but not too much. And when you are breathing on the buoy, after a while, you kind of feel how is the you don't need to check you feel how is if it's curling or yeah not. Okay. if it's on the proper position yeah. or not actually yeah. with a more different models uh, or company you don't get this yeah. and uh, i think people like kind of this yeah oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a solid and good product yeah yeah exactly okay so then we had the uh, lanyards what came next 
I mean, now you have a real big selection of different products. I mean, it's I growing like was, it feels every year one more thing yeah. is added. But I think was the pulling system, yeah. The pulley? Yeah, pulling system. Like, the small yeah. one, yeah. Yeah, the small one. What is um? What is the difference? Uh, I see there, bigger one. Uh, uh, yeah, here. Okay. Oh, oh. Um, I have here one. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. What is what is the difference? Not only by size, for those who don't know. I mean, we have uh, the XL and the normal one. I guess it's uh, also depending on the rope which one to use. Or yeah, yeah. It it depends. I would say like I started with this, yeah. and uh, then I got few people telling me, yeah, but when I pull the rope from like 50 meter plus or 40 plus with 10 kilo bottom weight, it's a little bit hard. Then I said, okay, maybe I made some tests and I realized like when like I was having bigger pulley, of course, this I knew in the, from the beginning, I, it would be a little bit more easier, but less compact yeah. and more expensive to produce. So yeah. the goal with that one was to make something compact, uh, strong, uh, that you leave under your boy and, uh, and super practical to, to change the length of the rope yeah. and to pull up. And but now, of course, after some teas with this one, a bit more expensive, a little bit bigger, but yeah, pulling up the rope is easier. And then, like um, six months ago, I was making tests to make an extra large professional model, yep. and at the end, actually, with bigger pulleys, and it, it was it didn't change so much. Yeah, was uh, between this and this, it's around 20 percent forces. Uh, more you need to pull up, mm -hmm. and but uh, well, that can be a lot depending on the weight you yeah, have there. Is, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have to say, yeah. Let's say if you have to pull, uh, if you we talk, let's say a, a, a 15, a 10 kilo bottom weight plus five kilo drag body drag or whatever, 15 kilo. Maybe with this one, I say numbers like this. Maybe it would be you need to pull like 18 uh, or 20 kilo yeah. or 18, and with this one, maybe 18 kilo. So it's a little bit more effective in terms of emergency. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, yeah, so I would suggest uh, people for deep diving more than 40 uh, and bigger rope, 12 mil, this works, this is more efficient. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. No, I really like this pulley. The pulley is uh, the XL, it's really nice. But if you see them compared, I mean, the, the one is just, just tiny. I... Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, um, tell us something about the, the colors. I mean, uh, probably you thought like, okay, the people want to be more individual and something, so I need to make it more attractive for the people, so I add the colors. I mean, with the nose clip, you, you go, you, you went far beyond. I, mean, <laughs> yeah. it's like, uh, I don't know, how many colors is there? Uh, 10, yeah, 12? 18, 18, 18 even, yeah. yeah, yeah. You went uh, beyond anything. So, um, um, with the other products, you also start with a certain amount. We talked about the octopus lanyard, where you reduce now the colors somehow. Um, with the Googles, um, you also uh, added three colors, I think. Yeah, actually, what I do now is I put usually like few colors, and then there is always one which people are less attracted. Yeah. And I because the thing is now I get more product, so it's more difficult to keep the stock with all the colors so finally yeah of course now i cannot afford to get like 10 colors per product i started with a nose clip like this because i had one product but now it's yeah it's uh, it's it will be three four colors sometimes only two yeah let's uh, don't forget if you have any questions you can leave a comment uh, below and me or pascal uh, gonna answer it uh, sooner or later promised uh, so any questions to uh, Pascal, to one of the products, um, or anything else, uh, just uh, leave a comment. Um, Pascal, then, um, okay, you started more and more developing. How was the feedback from the community? I mean, um, you you came from, from nowhere. Honestly, I mean, I knew you because I'm living in Switzerland, but um, like, You've been never been like dominated the freediving world, like let's say for example Alexei and uh, producing some mm. products. How was the feedback after the first, let's say the nose clips and the lanyards? How was the feedback uh, from the community? 
I think uh, on how did you feel? Uh, yeah, actually, I was uh, I was surprised actually even today because sometimes I get like customer I okay they order some stuff in my web shop I send them and then they send me a letter to thank me and I'm just like wow well, okay cool but I uh, just it's how often no, it, did you something when you ordered something in an online shop how often did you send a letter to the online <laughs> yeah, shop yeah they, 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 honestly me never <laughs> <laughs> okay no i think yeah no i think like uh well first thing is i think we have this swiss i guess for you too like i don't want to sell something like overpriced there are some limits I, I and even if i'm in switzerland in a rich country like okay 30 euro for a nose clip or 32 euro it's for us in switzerland is not so much but for some people like uh, they have to really like work hard it's like for yeah. us like yeah. 100 euro yeah. so yeah i try to be honest with my pricing and okay i i have to earn my life to pay my bills but um yeah, I try not to to yeah to find the right like uh, the right uh, the the right price where everybody is happy, and I think people feel this because like if you look at the for example at the leashes in 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 my nose clips, it takes really a long time, and usually you don't get this kind of quality leashes with all these details on a thirty euro nose clip. They put like basic rope with yeah. basic stuff. Yeah. No, I did also I, my first uh, lanyard I did by myself. It's just a yeah, uh, yeah. big uh, rope and uh, some carabiners, yeah. uh, some parts yeah, yeah. and uh, that's it. So I try, yeah, I try to, I try to give like uh, and to make stuff who will like uh, stay long, long, will you can use for many years. And in Switzerland we were grown with this kind of way of product now it's of course it's slowly Price changing new quality yeah like the military product we were using when we were a child or this kind of way of building for life i'm not saying it will stay for life but when you i'll be i will be super happy if in 15 years i have a guy telling me oh i'm using your pulley for 15 or 20 years now it's working perfectly the color faded a little bit but it's still and of course this is the goal so so I think people feel this, that like, uh, and that like I try to put a little bit innovation and uh, on the product, and uh, yeah. So I, I think, think you you uh, somehow influence the the way of creating products in the free diving world. Um, not only by you creating things, but because you invented more and thought a little bit out of the box compared to other companies, in general, it went into a better direction. I mean, the pulleys, for example, or the lanyards. I mean, after your lanyards, there came also some other companies now doing the lanyards. And, uh, of course, they analyzed your product and thought, like, okay, mm, yeah. No, we, we all analyze. Huh? We don't start with a far blank sheet. Like, but it's true, we're in the beginning, it's like... I will compare this to cycling, you know, we are almost now with the cycle with the big way in front and the small, you know, okay. hundred years ago. In scuba diving, they are already to the race bike of today, but in free diving, many things will change, I guess. Uh, there are some products, of course, for example, nose clip, it's hard to find another way to clip. I was trying, okay, I need to make something different on the, you know, the... Or maybe just putting in some. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> or stitching, <laughs> a stitching kit. But yeah, I didn't, okay, but maybe, so maybe no script will still look like this in, in 40 years, but for other product it will evolve and... Uh, yeah. And, uh, but we are in the beginning, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think so too, but I... I uh uh, me personally, I appreciate that you uh, developed uh, so many things in the free diving world because I think it's uh, it's creating um, how can I say a better um, the quality just uh, uh, changed in in the way the products been developed, um, and this is also because of you. I mean, you put a lot of effort into it. You did all the graphic designs or not the the cut designs and everything um, with knowledge behind it and uh, yeah it changed the way how um, yeah how people produce and how people uh, think about the quality of, of certain uh, products um, 
like niche products let's say also because some are niche products but um, yeah mm. I think it's really nice um, so then um, what is your newest project now uh, newest project um, uh, I have a, a project of auto equalization Google's but with a system different than you don't have to tell anything yeah, I, I yeah. don't want to I don't want to ask you more or less what is coming in the future this would be another <laughs> question but okay now we jump to ah, this okay one. Now yeah, we yeah. Jump to no this no one. I'm working for three years now on a project of Google's with a pocket of always like, you don't need uh, to tell uh, yeah, yeah. no okay. no I, I can tell <laughs> And, but I still have some work more to to finalize it. Uh, so yeah, kind of auto equalization Google's, but different from what is existing now. I hope more more who can equalize uh, with comfort deeper and uh, and much stronger and cheaper. But let's see, it still requires some 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 more prototyping. Um, and then, yeah, I'd like to have a kind of, I'd like to work on a niche product for viable weight, a handle, a quick release for viable weight, something. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, what else? Um, yeah, for the moment, mainly this is like what I have in mind. Uh, maybe a new model of, of nose clip with a specific feature, but I can tell okay. more now. Okay. And uh, yeah. That's uh, let's say next next twelve eighteen months project for the moment. All right, good. Yeah. So uh, we are curious about the new products. We probably find out soon. Um, thank you for your time. Um, it was You're really welcome. interesting. Um, I gonna ask you also some questions. I gonna ask everyone. Uh, one is like, what was your uh, most amazing uh, free diving memory? you had like the one which is uh, which was blowing your mind it can be an encounter with wildlife it can be let's say your variable weight record it can be everything is there anything you would say like okay that's still the the most memorable moment in freediving yeah it was not for me it was really when i was doing this uh, deep viable weight and i had this uh, super heavy sled and it was all, and at, and we had it was so heavy that we couldn't use a quick release, so a normal size. We, you have to we, explain. It was because of the sandbags. You yeah, used. yeah. We were using a special system of sandbag. It was kind of heavy, fifty or sixty kilo sand, and we had only small quick release, so they were too small to open. So at some moment we decided, okay, let's do it the old way. We just put a rope, and uh, and uh, Steve was having the cutter, so <laughs> for a knife. But that was the safest, actually. So it was just, it was this moment breathing, and at the moment he was cutting, it was just, you know, just in bam. And then you get sucked by the, because you go directly, there is no acceleration almost. You almost directly go to 2 meters or 2.3 meters seconds in, in 5 meters. So it's just getting sucked. So it was just, when it was a good training, this moment where you just you relax, you're breathing. You make the okay sign that you are you're like okay, you can cut, and then you just have your eyes leave it closed, and you see the knife, and and then you get sucked, and then yeah, yeah, it was like and Pelizzari, of course, like uh, meeting Pelizzari after, of course, meeting all these cool people like Miguel, Santiago, and other people from the freediving community who get good friends. But yeah, I suggest to anybody, who you, if you never have done it, like if you can do any stage with Umberto, just go for it. And read the, his, his biography, Menu. no book. Menu. Menu free diving. No, the, uh, bio, bio, the bio, book. Biography. Yeah, I don't know the yeah. title. Okay. Like, because then you get all the history is done. And then it just, I, I, I wrote, wrote the book after, unfortunately. But read the book before and just meet meet Umberto and then you just see fuck like yeah like him and, and Herbert I don't know but which I guess like yeah like um, like but meeting Umberto just meet meet him once small stage but just go for it he's just like amazing guy okay yep. so and Miguel so. too Miguel <laughs> if I don't say Miguel then I'm gonna have no, Miguel and Umberto claro claro que, si, claro, claro que si. 
Um, so it's more or less two uh, super memorable mom- uh, memories. Yeah, yeah many, like but the, yeah, yeah. Okay, these are the ones. Yeah, yeah. So the last question would be, um, name the top three freediving places you've been. Okay, so well, you can go on top, one, two, three, or you can just name okay, three. Okay, yeah, um, but, but the basic really is just amazing. Mind-blowing is, is, is Dean's Blue Hole when I went one, one time. Just, it's just like a setup. It's like just imagine, oh, draw me the perfect blue hole. You know, okay, I make a hole. Okay, mountains around, a little bit protecting everything. Okay, a little bit sand, white sand. Yeah, okay, a beach, white sand. Oh, a little bit access to the deep, to the sea. Yeah, okay, and then you, it's just perfection. Like, uh, except missing a little bit of lightning. It's a little bit dark, but except this is just perfect. There are no cars, it's not touristic, it's still wild. It's just like, wow, yeah. Then uh, Amogos, where I used to, I used to do a few competitions. It's super wild. It's not the perfect place to dive deep. It's the authentic uh, blue you did. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, but uh, there is a spot uh, down the monastery, uh, on, which there is a monastery on the mountains, and you can dive there. Okay, it's a little bit physical. You need to swim a few hundred meters to get like some depths. But the surrounding is just like totally amazing, like really like wow. And the water is really blue, a blue like so luminous. I have never seen, I'm sure there are other places in the Med Sea or in the world, but I've never seen a, a blue so like, yeah, it's yeah. really incredible. Okay. And the uh, third place, well, I guess many, but like I remember I went in, uh, in Bali in this jamboree competition mm-hmm. and the diving with the volcano in the back was kind of nice and the going by pirogues to the competition platform and everything was yeah it was cool and Julia like uh, was uh, there Bali you, yeah. yeah she's mm-hmm. super cool so yeah okay sounds good yep I will put the the names and the, um, the schools uh, in the description below um, yeah, thank you for your time, Pascal. Thank you, thank uh, you for coming in Geneva. It was nice to time. meet Anytime. you finally, yeah? yeah finally. We live in a small country, but uh, we all travel, but we going from Geneva to Zurich, it's only like, what, 250 kilometers, 300? Know, by, by train, it's about two and a half, two, two hours, 45 minutes or something. Yeah, yeah. but we never really go, actually. No. We go more easily, take a flight, which is a bit stupid, but then going like, you are more stranger than a guy from Portugal or from Spain. <laughs> and they speak a strange language. Huh? You're, you're Swiss or Dutch? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going no, to switch it. No, okay. No. no, no, but we have different. No, we speak French, I speak German, and uh, there is always this game of a little bit between these. The rusty graben. Yeah, we the call it the rusty graben. Yes. Like, uh, but yeah. All right, uh, highly appreciated. Thank you very much Thank for you. the interview. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, yeah, leave a comment below. Uh, don't forget to uh, follow and subscribe also on uh, Pascal's Octopus, Instagram, Facebook, and so on. Perfect. Thank you, Pascal. Thank you. It was very Ciao. nice. Ciao. Ciao, everyone. Ciao, ciao.